Hey folks, welcome to my DIY filament sensor video. So when you start 3D printing, last thing you think about is running out of a filament. But when you do run low on a spool and you don't have a filament sensor, you realize you want one. And the reason is then you can use 100% of the filament on your spool and do a filament change. So on Thingiverse, I found a filament sensor holder and, you know, for DIY filament. So it's got a micro switch and a space for a sponge. That's what I'm highlighting there. And it shows you how to edit the config, the YAML config. And now that I'll include that in the link that's, I mean, in the notes. And this way you can go through it. It'll show you how to wire it up to the GPIO header in your Raspberry Pi. And again, all of that will be in the description. I'll have all of the links there. And then they give you some wiring diagrams. So you're going to be using basically power ground and a sensor. It's 3.3 volts, and they're showing you how it's hooked up and how to solder up and what the connectors look like. And that's what the final product looks like. So again, uh, it's showing you pin 1, pin 6, pin 32. And one's power, one's ground, and one's going to be the sensor. And you're going to have a pull-up and pull-down resistor for it. And they also have the plug-in for the filament sensor. So you're going to need to do what it says here in this uh, for the plug-in. Add that plug-in into your Octoprint. Now, what I'm showing you here is their design on the left and my modified design on the right. If I don't have to buy hardware at the hardware store, I'm good. So if I make the cover slotted... So it can just dovetail slide in. Okay. I had to open up, even though I modified their design, I had to open it up so the micro switch worked right. And I also had to open up the GPIO pins on my Raspberry Pi case. So I grabbed out the Dremel with the cutter and then the reciprocating or oscillating bone saw, as they call it. Open up those cuts and a little bit of surgery later with all of the guest equipment. And then I drilled a hole because I was going to suspend it from a hole. And all right, so now we're soldering. I soldered up the header. So power grounded sensor. There's the micro switch soldered up, shrink wrapped. And here's the micro switch sitting in the massively opened up hole for clearance. Here's the Raspberry Pi with the header plugged in, everything plugged in, ready to go. And here is what I might do in the future. It's just a switch uh, that's running in the uh, housing. So how does it look when it runs? So I'm going to click print. There I am clicking print. And I speed it up a bit. So it's everything's coming up to temperature. So the bed is going to come up to temperature. And then the print head comes up to temperature. And I sped up the control. So you see it's zero. It prints a little bit of a line. And now it's doing layer one. So I am going to simulate a filament outage just by removing the switch from the housing because I just don't want to, you know, unfeed. All right, so it stopped because I simulated the filament outage. And I'm going to move the print head around. Uh, I moved it up twice and uh, I think I click home, move it off uh, the bed. Okay, so I clicked home. All right, it moves over. And there's a little bit of a straggly piece there. I go out and trim that. Okay, I'm moving the print head around a little bit more. So the other important thing is you see there's the big red restart button. Don't hit that one. Hit the resume button. Okay, so I click to resume. So... Let's see, we go to the temperature page again, we look, we're 199 and 60 degrees C, go back to the control page, and we see the head slowly moving back to the print, and we look at the control page, and we're on layer number two, so ideally it should just pick up where it left off, as painfully slow as it moves. And I'll spare you the suspense. It was successful. So we're going back here. And I, I have no idea why it moved this slow. It 
and we see it picks up where it left off. So very successful. I'm very happy about this. And what it enables me to do from now on is use an entire spool without worrying about ending up with a destroyed print. Thank you very much for watching, and I greatly appreciate it. And I would like to thank my Patreon sponsors for their support. Visit flyingrich.com for all of my social media and patreon.com slash flyingrich to support projects like this.